Hey friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. My name is Becky. I'm glad you're here with me today because we are in my garden and we are gonna be planning out some starts that I started. These are some summer squash and winter squash that I've got here. Honestly, I started probably three or four times the amount of this, but they, my germination was pretty poor. So we're not only gonna plant out the ones that did start and look really healthy, but we are gonna direct seed a bunch of summer squash and winter squash. And we also are gonna direct seed some corn. Sorry, I'm sitting in the shade. It's like 83 degrees out and it's only April 18th. And where I live, we typically don't get our first 80 degree weather until May. So it's pretty toasty out here. It's beautiful. I live in zone 8B. I live in Washington State, just north of Portland, Oregon, about 10 minutes. The corn that we are gonna plant today is from Johnny Seeds. It's Catalytic XRF1, it's a hybrid. I chose this corn because I wanted a hybrid corn. Last year I picked True Gold from Baker Creek and it is an heirloom variety and I think the days to maturity was like 110 days, which is a really long time and they didn't do very well. And so I decided that I want to try to up my production. And so one way to do that is to grow a hybrid seed. My harvest last year was pretty poor. I got enough, the corns themselves were only about this big and I only had one corn per stalk. And some of them were so small they weren't even worth harvesting. And so I only got enough corn out of five rows to only make two corn salsas, which is just not enough. I went through Johnny Seed Catalog online and I read through a bunch of their hybrid corn varieties and I wanted one that produced at least two if not three corns per stalk and I wanted a corn that was going to grow in a shorter period of time instead of 110 days this corn should grow in 66 days it says which to me that seems really really short if that's the case that'll be super awesome a lot of people when they plant their corn from what I've researched online is a succession plant their corn I'm not doing that because I want all my corn to come in at one time. The way we normally eat corn is frozen corn around here. So when it's all ready, I want it all ready at the same time so I can do one big harvest and one big preservation day and just get it done and in the freezer. We are also gonna be planting out some winter squash. We're gonna direct seed a few of that. I've got some Dollar Tree butternut squash that we're gonna plant. I have a jack-o'-lantern pumpkin. This is a hybrid pumpkin from Johnny Seed as well. We've kind of started this tradition with my mother-in-law where we paint pumpkins instead of carve them. We like to paint them so that they last longer. So I thought it'd be fun if I could grow my own pumpkin for that. We're gonna try to grow a Cinderella pumpkin, some spaghetti squash, Jaradale pumpkin. I don't know how to say that. That one I wanna put on my front porch because I think it would be pretty. Um, this striped zucchini from MI Gardener. This did not germinate when I tried to do my start, so I wanna try that again. We're gonna do a Black Beauty zucchini, and we are gonna do loofahs. These are some seeds that my high school friend sent me from Loofah Gourd she grew last year. And then this is another variety of loofah that I purchased at my local nursery. We are gonna be planting these on the arch trellis that I made. So we are gonna start by planting the loofah gourds on this arch that I made. I made this arch out of one cattle panel. It's 16 feet by 50 inches. And I just put two T-posts in each corner and, and I pounded those in and I tied it up with some zip ties. It was pretty easy. It only cost me about $28 to make this. T-posts were recycled. Their previous owner had left a bunch of T-posts laying around the property. So I was able to reuse those to make this trellis. I am gonna start by moving the wood chips out of the way and I am going to be placing some well composted horse manure along the trench. This soil is soil that I have started amending last year. This is kind of a no-till area. This whole area was grass last year and so it definitely needs some amending. So that is what the horse manure is for. I just added a few shovelfuls of the dirt that I purchased when I built my raised beds. I kind of had a little bit left over so I just put a couple shovelfuls of that in there and I'm going to mix that in with the manure as well. So I'm sitting in the shade because it's hot, but I may have just solved the problem why I had such poor germination. I just was reading the package and it says that you need to soak them for 24 hours before planting, or you need to nick them with a file or nail clippers, which I didn't do either of those last time. I'm gonna go ahead and plant all of these out. And as far as I can tell, I'm gonna just do a little clip on them. I don't know exactly what I'm doing, but I hope that this will help us be more successful in the germination of these going into the garden. So I wanna see if I can show you what I'm doing. There's this extremely hard outside shell around what I think is the seed on the inside. 
So I'm taking the clipper and I'm just barely nipping it to try to kind of break that seal a little bit. So I think this one I broke a little bit too much because you can actually see the seed. I think you just, don't quote me, but I think you just want to kind of crack that so that the seed can open up easier. I'm going to plant that one though that I just did. There we go. They've all been nipped. Now that we have our Lufer Gourd seeds snipped, let's go ahead and get them planted. The packaging says to plant three seeds per hole and 12 inches apart. So that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do. We got the Lufas planted. This is the first project out of three that we are doing today. We are gonna head next to the winter and summer squash bed. I'm gonna give these a very, very thorough watering because I didn't soak them for 24 hours. I probably will come back and water these one or two more times before we call it a night, just to make sure they have a really good drink of water. Been sitting here for about 20 minutes way overthinking this zucchini and winter squash bed. Just really like feeling anxiety about it and like doubting myself and not sure what to do. I don't know, I think that I keep reading the back of the seed packets and I want more information on it and it's not giving me that much information. And so I feel like I should just get this stuff in the ground. I think I'm overthinking it. I don't tend to be an overthinker. I'm usually just put it in the ground and see what happens or try it and see what happens kind of person but for some reason I'm really stuck on this bed and I don't know why so I know that I will probably feel better once I have it planted I think I just can't I just I don't know what it is but this bed is really stressing me out and that's not what it should be it should be fun I think in my head what I'm trying to do is find the balance between how many zucchini plants I should have and the, where I should put the winter squash because I know that zucchini is very prolific and I really I'm planting right now two four six eight zucchini plants which is probably way 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 too many zucchini plants for my husband and I to go through that zucchini but if I grow too much that just means I'm growing more food for my chickens and that's less food that I'll have to purchase for my chickens I kind of had this idea of throwing whole those really big zucchinis we get and throwing them whole in the freezer for the last couple weeks I've been giving my chickens some frozen zucchini that I had chopped up that got freezer burned so I couldn't use it anymore and they love it so I think that if I grow too many zucchinis it will be a good thing because then I can just pull one out and give them to the chickens it'll be two things in the summer when it's really hot they'll be able to eat something that's cool and I think that will be nice for them um, but then that will be extra food that I don't have to purchase I don't know why but this zucchini bed is just you know what I think that's really bothering me about this I think part of the reason why I'm having anxiety about this bed is I planted along the outside some Walla Walla onion starts that I bought. They were like $2.99 for $200 or something and or something like that. I don't know how much they were. And that is really just bothering my brain, I think. Because what I wanted to do is have my zucchinis here and then like this, that's a, that's a Cinderella pumpkin, is I want those vining out along the edge and I feel like those onions are in the way. And I feel like I'm gonna be wasting those onions if I, I have dirt under my eye. And I feel like I'm gonna be wasting those onions if my winter squash like crowds them out and they're not able to grow, which is totally silly because those onion starts were very inexpensive and I have over 500 or 600 onions. I don't know, I have a ton of onions planted. So if I lose two or three because I'm growing a 15 pound winter squash, that should be okay. And part of it I think is I, I'm i wishing that I was more of a planner. Um, I've, I've commented a lot that I don't really plan my garden. I just come out here and feel it. And that's a good thing and a bad thing. It's a good thing because I'm able to just do things. I tend not to get caught up in analysis by paralysis, um, but I feel like I'm struggling with that right now. That's exactly what I'm struggling with. I'm overthinking this. I don't want to waste anything. I feel like I should know what should go where and where it should go when I should plan this, but I need to give myself grace because this is only my second year doing this. And you know, if I lose a couple onions because I want to plant a winter squash there, or if I plant too much zucchini, um, I think it'll all be okay. So I just need to just 
get some seeds in the ground and then just move forward and just learn from it. Thanks for hearing me out on that. I feel a lot better. Um, after talking to you guys, I just grabbed some seeds and plopped them in here. I haven't put them in yet, but I grabbed the packets and kind of have an idea of what I'm gonna do. I think in this world with the internet, we have so much information at our fingertips that if we feel like we don't know something or we can't just like Google it really quickly to like know what the right answer is, we can get overwhelmed. And that was me in that moment right there. But just think like even 30 years ago, you couldn't just Google anything. And so there might have been like a piece about just doing things. And so I'm just gonna do things. I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna go for it. Um, I've got a plan and let me show you what that plan is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plant some winter squash at the very edge on both that side and this side. And then I'm gonna plant some winter squash along the outside that can vine out that way. And then in the middle here is where I'm gonna plant my zucchini. What I'm thinking by having the vining plants on the outside, it's gonna be easier for me to harvest the zucchinis in here. And then I'm gonna have the other vines vining out that way and then vining out into the walkway. So first off, I have a Dollar Tree butternut squash start here, and then I'm gonna plant a couple more seeds there. This is the Dollar Tree Early Yellow. I've got two of those. And then I have two of the Early Prolific MI Gardener seeds. I am gonna plant this striped zucchini from MI Gardener, and then I'm gonna plant one more Black Beauty zucchini there because I only had two green zucchinis germinate and I want four of them, I think. That is a Black Beauty zucchini and then that's a Dollar Tree dark green zucchini. So I'm gonna switch those. All right, that's better. So that I have the same two varieties right here. And then here I have a spaghetti squash, spaghetti squash and Cinderella squash. This Cinderella squash, I'm just gonna let vine out like crazy. And then coming around, the other side of the bed where I'm gonna have the winter squash. These are the New England sugar pie pumpkins. I grew those last year. I grew both of these last year actually. And I'm gonna plant every other just going down here and I'm gonna let those vine out this way. And I'm using these paper pots for my zucchinis and winter squash and I really like them. The one thing though is when I was doing the paper pots with the tomatoes and peppers, I used a wine bottle and one sheet of newspaper and I had no problem with breakage or anything like that. They held up great, but I used a wide mouth mason jar for these winter squash because I wanted the base of the pot to be a lot bigger so that the roots would have room to grow. But because a mason jar is a lot wider than a wine bottle, it didn't wrap around twice. I'm having problems more with breakage on these pots than I did on the pepper and tomato pots. So if you guys make these and you make them with a wide mouth mason jar, use two pieces of newspaper instead of just one. I have a video on how to make these paper pots. I'll link it up above and I'll link it below if you want to see how to make them. Yesterday I prepped this bed, so I don't need to prep it at all today. There was still a pretty heavy layer of leaf mulch on this bed. And to spare you guys, because I know you've seen me do it before, I took all the leaf mulch off and then I put a layer of manure on this bed. So I think I overpromised and underdelivered on this video. I think I was a little too ambitious um, and not realistic on how much time I had and what I was gonna be able to get done today. Today when I thought I was gonna be able to get the loofahs, the summer and winter squash planted and the corn, I'm gonna have to leave the corn for another day and I am gonna have to leave some of the other winter squash for another day, the winter squash that I'm gonna be planting alongside the corn. I am still really happy with what I got done today. I think that mental hurdle of figuring out this bed just really drained me, which is fine. That's part of the process. And I just need to be okay with what I got done. By not getting the corn done today, that just means it's one more afternoon I get to spend out here working in my garden. And so that's never a bad thing. Let me know if you guys struggle with gardener's doubt or anxiety or anything like that. Almost any time I plant something, I have anxiety about it and I doubt my ability. My corn that I planted a few videos back, I was convinced that it wasn't gonna come up and actually replanted that bed there because when I got home from that girl's trip that I went on right after planting it, it looked like some rodent or something had scurried through it and I thought that maybe they had eaten all the seed. And so I replanted it, but then now today, there's tons of carrots sprouting. And another example is after I planted my kale, they didn't do anything for like three weeks and I was convinced that they weren't gonna do anything. I was like, well, they're not gonna grow. 
because there's not enough sun or, or my ability to do starts is poor and so they're stunted or something. And now they're looking fantastic. If you guys have ever experienced anything like that, um, leave them in the comments below. And if there's anything that helps you with that like anxiety or that gardener's anxiety or gardener's doubt, what helps you with it? I hope you guys have a fantastic day and I will see you next time. Bye guys.